Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Hi everyone, welcome to Photoshop User TV. I am Corey Barker, we are, well, I'll introduce the rest of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do, this or that? We are brought to you, of course, by Photoshop, or National Association of Photoshop, professionals who bring you Photoshop User Magazine. The newest wedding issue is available now, as you can see right now. It's an all-wedding issue. We completely themed the entire issue around. Corey weddings. got married just to be in this, I did, in this issue. Yes, I did, yes. They yeah. paid for my wedding just so they could <laughs> put it all in the magazine. Hi, everyone. I'm Corey Barker. Welcome. And with me today is someone who I haven't seen in some time, it's been Mr. A while. Dave Cross. How hey, are you? everyone. Very well, thank it's you. It's been a while. It How is. Have you been? Excellent. All Busy as heck. Of course. Yes. Building a house, doing business, all that good stuff. So fun, And you're fun, having fun. so much fun building. Oh, yeah, it's been yeah. so much fun. So many cool stories. And of course, over at the weather station is our good friend, Mr. Pete Collins. Hi, Pete. How's, how's it going? Pete? Good to see you guys. Looking right at you. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Nice to be here. <laughs> You having fun? <laughs> there you go. That's, that's all it. I got this morning. That's all he's got today. <laughs> yep. Well, that's the only reason we had him on the show today. So, all right, we're going to dive right in in just a minute. Uh, but first, I want to mention a really cool deal that's going on right now. It's uh, I'm going to read it because it's very small print. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get my binoculars now. <laughs> the print on the prompter is very small. But Peach Bit has a really cool deal. It's a Kelby TV E deal. Now, for a limited time, you can get 40. It's a limited time offer, 40 percent off. A book called The Print and the Process: Taking Compelling Photographs from Vision. To Expression by David Dushiman. Very cool. Just use the coupon code KelbyTV and that offer ends on March 1st. So be sure to check that out at peachbit.com. You can see it right on screen there. Very cool. So, what else have we got going on? We've got Photoshop World coming Photoshop up. Photoshop World's coming up soon. It's uh, April. April, April 17th. Orlando. We're going to be in Orlando, Florida. I'm going to be there. We're all going to be there, actually. Yep. You're going to be there as well. Mm -hmm. Pete. Yeah, we definitely want to remind them to take advantage of the early bird special. Go ahead. You'll save $100 off. And we've got a great deal at the hotel right across from the conference center. Uh, if you join now, you'll get a great rate. That's where we're staying. You want to go ahead and lock that in. It's that's at the, the Rosen Center, right? The Rosen Center. Yeah. yeah. The right. Rosen Rosen. The Rosen. <laughs> I know that <laughs> reference, but I'm not going to call it out. <laughs> And it, is, right. it is right across the street, and that's a real advantage. Anyone who's been to Photoshop World knows the last thing you want to do is spend forever traveling back and forth. So the fact that you can just hop right across the street is uh, definitely You will plus. definitely, you'll be walking enough already, of course, and uh, so it's, it's definitely a big help that's right across the street. And it's in our new convention center, too, so you haven't been there. It's a really big, mm -hmm. nice convention center. All right, enough of that. Let's dive right in. We're going to like, go ahead and let Dave kick things off. So what have you got for us today? Well, I was talking to someone the other day, and they were saying that, yeah, I, I use layer masks a lot, but they found they were using their mouse a whole lot to go all over the place. So mm -hmm. it occurred to me that it might be worth spending a few moments just talking about a few kind of quick shortcuts and tips when you're working with layer masks. Sure. Um, so... Well, the first one I would do, and this is not a built-in one. This requires an extra step on your part, but Hold it on, occurred may to I me. Interrupt. Certainly. Where is this picture from? Oh yes, I'm sorry. This is uh, myself and my two sisters in Scotland in 19 probably 70. Wow. Um, yes. When I was minus 20 years old. So. You uh, mean you shot that on film? <laughs> I shot a film. I actually came across this at my parents' house recently, so I took a photo of it so I could share it with my sisters. So I just thought it was kind of a fun, one of my favorite photos, just because it was us in the. Fields of Heather. So that was in 1970-ish, maybe 85. Okay. <laughs> so uh, anytime you want to add a layer mask, just to begin with, you have to come down and click on this icon down at the bottom, which is okay, but I like to use keyboard shortcuts. So one of the things that I did is I went through here and said, let's go to edit our keyboard shortcuts. So I went to application menus and then layer, and if I scroll down far enough, there is an option here that says layer mask. I've already done it. Hold on. Don't look. Don't look. Let me switch it back. So you hate it when that happens. I hate when you show something that you did earlier. Okay. Wait a minute. So this is what it normally looks like. I come down to layer mask reveal all. And in this edit keyboard shortcuts, you can allocate a keyboard shortcut for anything. The problem, of course, is finding something that isn't already taken. So I happen to know, because I tried it previously, that if I press Command Shift L or Control Shift L, it comes up and says, this is already in use to be used by something called Autotone. And my feeling is, since I don't even know what Autotone is, the chances that. are I will not use that keyboard shortcut. So in this case, I'm okay with choosing Accept. Now, my suggestion is, read what it says, and if you go, oh wait, that is a useful shortcut, but often you can find ones that Adobe's allocated 
So I just hit accept, and now, from now on to my own layer mask, I just press the shortcut, bang, I've got a layer mask. Mm -hmm. So it's just a whole lot easier. Now, unfortunately, the only time, the only problem with that is it doesn't work if you want to make a mask based on a selection because that shortcut just says add a layer mask doesn't doesn't right. matter whether you have a selection or not so say you wanted to make a mask based on a selection then the other option would be to go to your actions panel and again I've done it previously so I would I have a whole set of little actions that are just one step actions. so in this set of actions I would just start uh, to make a new action and call it add mask and give it some F key shortcut, like say F5 for the sake of argument, hit record and all I'm going to do is click on the add mask and then stop recording. So now I have to just remember that it's F5 because it means from now on if I'm doing something and I want to make maybe a couple of selections and then make a mask, I just have to remember it's F5 as he looks through his keyboard and now I've cut to the chase to do that a little more quickly oh, yeah. as well. So those are two things that aren't built in, but you can make life a lot easier. Once you have a layer mask, then here are the other shortcuts I would be using. B for brush, and then you look at your foreground and background colors, and it's black and white. If you need to swap them, you press X. So this way, you can decide if you want to paint on the mask somewhere else, and if you paint too far, you get some result you don't want. You press X to go back to black, and then, of course, the bracket keys get bigger and smaller. And the final one, thats it's one of those shortcuts that it just takes a bit of practice. Most people have discovered that when you're working on a layer mask, at some point you want to paint in overlay mode, because mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it just makes life a lot easier. And I finally remembered the shortcut because I found myself constantly going back up and forth this menu to switch between normal and overlay, which was kind of a pain. So if you do Option Shift or Alt Shift O, it's overlay and then N for normal. So that way in the middle of painting, you can just switch and go overlay, paint, 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 normal, instead of going back and forth to that menu. So just shortcuts to save you time from navigating all over the place to click on things. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I don't know half of this stuff. <laughs> I just I just learn from y'all and repeat it. So, and that's one of those, it's a little weird because it's not a shortcut that's like command or control something. It's option shift or alt shift and then usually it's the first letter. So mm -hmm. like O for overlay, N for normal, and then some of them are a little weird, like I can't remember some of the other ones. Those are the two I use mostly when I'm painting on a mask. Now I remember why we didn't have Dave on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Always show something. I'm like, what? <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dave. That was no awesome. Problem. All right, layer, layer mask, can't live without them. I use them all the time. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have Pete uh, doing our feature tutorial. Before that, I have a quick little thing I'm going to show you. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here. I want to tell you about a brand new member benefit for members of the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. We just call it NAP for short. So at NAP we have literally thousands of training tutorials. That's what we do. We teach Photoshop, right? But the tutorials that we've had have always been kind of short, sweet, down and dirty, quick. But now we are announcing full, in-depth online training classes. That's right taught by some of the best instructors in the world. Now here's the thing too, if you're a beginner, this is so for you because the focus of our first round of classes was really on the beginner, on leading you step by step to where you become advanced. And we'll be adding new classes all the time. Now, the coolest thing about all this is, we didn't raise the price. In fact, we've never raised the price. NAP still is just $99, back like it was years and years ago, but it includes a full subscription to Photoshop User Magazine, the digital version or print, your choice, and these brand new full-length online training courses. So I hope you'll check this out at PhotoshopUser.com. It's where people go to get really good at Photoshop. All right, we are back. That You just saw a little mention of the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. As we mentioned before, you get this wonderful magazine 10 times a year, but also a ton of tutorials by all these guys. So it's the best $99 you'll ever spend as a way to learn more about Photoshop. And not to mention, we have full online courses now as right, part of your NAP membership. Not, you know, not just on Kelby Training, but mm -hmm. on the NAP site, we have full classes. I and mean, just recently finished an in-depth series of all of Photoshop. So if you're brand new to Photoshop, 
dive right in and you'll know everything about it. And then you can start hanging with the big boys. Right. Now, I wish there was a way we could perhaps show them an example of the kind of tutorial they would see on the NAP website. Yes. So we're going to take another break and figure out how to do that. No. No, actually, I, I got something pretty cool. It's actually kind of reaching into the past. Something I did, uh, first couple of years I was here, I did this kind of cool atmospheric effect of, um, as they call them, god beams. Um, in an image here. Now, in this particular photo, they're actually already there. But let's just say I wanted to enhance it a little bit more. So I'm going to use channels again. Oh, I just did it. <laughs> Same thing. Ignore that. <laughs> I did it too. OK. So I'm going to go into channels, because I am a huge user of channels. So I'm going to go. And just kind of toggle through here and look. And they all look the same contrast-wise. Blue one seems to be the darkest. So let's just make a duplicate of that blue channel. Just drag it to the new icon there. Now I'm going to really boost the contrast here. So I'm going to do a levels adjustment. And let's just take the dark and really push this in. Not too much. I want to get a good bit of the brightness, but I want to take care or knock out some of that black in the, in the background area there, something like that. So Corey, your theory on doing this is that you're wanting to, the black is going to be hidden and the white is going to be selected or is it the it's gonna be Yeah, I want that light area, more concentrated selection. You know, if I did it just as it was, it would have selected most of the image because it was mostly very, very dark or very light. So that whatever is black on an alpha channel will of course be unselected. So let's go back into the image. And we'll create a new blank layer and let's just load that selection. And the blue copy, there it is, OK. So you can see there's active, active selection. I'm going to press Command Delete so it'll fill the white background swatch inside of there. So that's made that a little bit better. But here's a cool trick. I actually learned this a while back. And it's probably the only time I've ever used this blend mode in a practical sense. And it is dissolve. I've, I've never used it otherwise. I mean, it's, one of those, it's one of those blend modes that's like, why is it here? I think there's only actually three documented uses for the dissolve yes, mode yes. in their own and, the fact, one of them. and the fact that it is the second one, you always <laughs> yeah. have to yeah, step it's, over it's, it to get to whatever honestly, else you want. the least used. I mean, I've, I've actually discovered ways you can use it. The problem was when you would run dissolve or change a blend mode to dissolve, no matter what you did to that layer, it was always going to be in that dissolve mode. So if I did something like run a blur on this, thinking I'm going to get like the streaky look, all I'm doing is just enhancing that look, that no. speckled look. So, yes. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> anyway, no time later. So what I'm going to do is actually I need to be able to keep kind of keep the speckly look, but be able to run filters on it. So I'm going to create a new layer underneath this existing layer. And if you do that, you can just hold down the Command key on Mac, Control on Windows, and it places a new layer underneath your current layer. Then I'll just reselect that layer, press Command E, merges the layer down, and now we're back to a normal blending mode, but we're still maintaining that speckly look. So now I'm going to go and run a filter, motion blur. And you can see I've got, you need to use this little wheel here just to match the angle of the existing light in the image right there. I don't need it quite that streaky, or something like that it looks pretty good. So if I click OK, and you can see it's really enhanced those beams in there quite well. Now, these beams over here on the side, I don't think I like. So let's just throw a layer mask on that. And I'm going to use the gradient tool. And I always use foreground the transparent, just so I can uh, be able to put multiple gradients in the event I need to. It's just a habit now. But I'm just going to add one in the side here and just kind of fade that right there. So that looks pretty good. Now, if it seems too intense, you can, of course, just drop the opacity of that layer down. And that looks pretty good. Then I thought, well, why stop there? I feel like I have to say that now every time I do something. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is actually go and reselect, or actually create another duplicate of that blue channel, like we did a moment ago. Invert it. Just simply press Command or Control I, inverts the values on that, and I'm going to again run that levels adjustment, get it really bright. Eh, not quite that much. I've got to be able to see the trees in the background there. There we go. And then now, Let's go back in. I'm actually going to go ahead and load that as a selection. Now, when I did it a moment ago, you could see I did select and then load selection. Another way is to simply just hold down the command key and click directly on that channel. Basically loads the brightness or luminosity of that channel as a selection. So back in the layers, I'll create a new layer and fill that with white. Then I'm going to just simply make sure you have a selection tool active. I'm going to just nudge the left arrow about three or four times and then press Delete. 
No, oh, I need to invert it. Is that right? Yes, it is. I only did this once already. <laughs> okay, back up. So what you're trying to do is create a highlight where the light. Yeah, I want to have some edge light on those trees there. There we go. You got to think, what would Bob Ross do? <laughs> what would he do? This worked five times in my office. <laughs> of course it did. And then the one time, okay. Okay, there. We go. A little bit better. Okay, so I'm just going to nudge that over just a little bit and then bring the opacity down. Give me a little bit of a blur effect. I don't know why it's blur. I know why. Take two. <laughs> if it doesn't work this time, I'm done. <laughs> I nudged it over too many times. There we go. So just nudge it. There we go. So now it puts a little bit of an edge light on that tree. It just brightens the light that's shining on there. I'm going to bring that opacity down quite a bit here. But now you can see the difference. There's before. And it looked pretty good before, mm -hmm. but then it's just taking it and enhancing that effect a little bit more and then adding that on there. Now, one last step, and I know I've taken way too much time here, but if you wanted to add that kind of speckly look, here's another way of using Dissolve. On that layer that contains those enhanced beams, add a layer style and just add a simple outer glow and change that blend mode to dissolve and then bring the opacity down and you can have that kind of subtle a fourth way to use dissolve you know, yes <laughs> document that but it kind of gives that subtle kind of you know things floating in space like it's kind of look, atmospheric you know. yeah. interruptions what's that Atmospheric interruptions. Atmospheric I can't say it twice. Yes, there. <laughs> Don't say it again. So anyway, all right. Before I mess up again, there it is. So this way of enhancing it with uh, just using the information that's there to create uh, enhanced uh, atmospheric effects. So uh, cool. Please. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's that's cool though because it just shows that that when you're experimenting, some of the ways you find things is just by trying things. And, Absolutely. And, and when you move something, you might move it a bit too far one time and come back, so yeah, and it's all good. Don't, dis don't get discouraged, of course, you know, and, it's, and it's always use that. Like, you know, I'm already thinking, what, you know, well, how can I make snow and other rain effects with mm -hmm. this, you know? So one thing leads to another, just don't get too, uh, too frustrated with it, so. So, right. let's go to Pete. Pete, when the weather station has... All right, well... I see fair images. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, what people don't realize is that it always goes more smoothly when you're preparing. <laughs> of course. As soon as you get on the camera, everything fights against you, <laughs> and that time seems like an eternity as you're trying to figure it out. In fact, out. I'm going to sort it out while you're doing your thing. Yeah. We'll re-show it later. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to share a couple things in Lightroom and really some photographic philosophy with you at the same time. Ooh, philosophy. Yes, I know. Ooh, uh, talk about kind of looking at your images, but also looking at some ways that you can tweak your Lightroom. All right, if we go over to Lightroom, and I'm in the develop module, the shortcut for that is just D to jump over to the develop module. When I come over here to, to work with anything, I can come in and I can right click, and if I don't have this on, if I open these, what happens is I eventually get this long list of open tablets over here, panels, and that can be a little clunky, and it annoys me after a while. Well, if you just right click on any of these and turn on solo mode, all that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you whatever one you're working on, say the basic panel, that's the only one that's gonna be open. It's gonna allow you to keep this a lot cleaner. And Okay, now I wanna go down and add some effects, so I click on that, and it's not me chasing after all the panels. But I'm gonna tell you one step further. If you right click on here, you can come in, and if there are any of these that you're not gonna be using, such as camera calibration, click on the check mark and it disappears, split toning, disappears. And you can get it down to just, you know, the, the last few things that you use and those are all that you use most of the time. And now you're not gonna have to jump over any extra um, options there. And if you need something like split toning, you can just go back in there, find it, click it, and it comes right back on. Those are my quick little tips for using Lightroom. But now let's talk about photographic philosophy here. Here's some images I took. RC and I went to the State Fair over the weekend, and I took some pictures. And this was really a behind-the-scenes shot of him getting a shot. We actually went up on the third floor of this fun house to get some shots up there. But what I wanted to talk about is cleaning up your images. 
when you're dealing, especially with something like this, there's just a lot of visual impact coming at you and what I call a lot of visual noise. One of the things that you can do with your images is to help reduce some of the extraneous visual noise. If you look at this picture, it, it looks all right, but here are a few things that you need to pay attention to. Little details that are gonna change your image. If we look down here in the corner, we've got some rivets, we've got some reflections up here, and we've even got some graffiti. Well, if I take this, and once I've processed it in Lightroom, I take it over to Photoshop, I just start simply uh, cloning out and getting rid of some of these. And you really don't notice much unless I go back and forth between the before and after. Here's the before, you know, it's the lines, the reflections, stuff like this, and here's the after. And what it does, it allows your photograph to breathe a little bit better. It takes out some of that visual noise that could be in there. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now that's just a little subtle thing, but what I like to do with all my images is look for ways that I can just get rid of some of those little things that are gonna distract, because a photograph can really get distracting very easily by just some little things in there. For instance, this one is a shot down low under a tilt-a-whirl-like thing, but I know that people are gonna go, oh, wait a minute, we can see its license plate, you know, and then should he have that license plate in or whatever? So just simply coming in and taking that out is gonna take away a distraction from your image. Some people go, well, you should leave everything in there. I'm not a photojournalist. I'm a photographer and an artist. I get to decide what's in there and what's out of there, and I want to make an image that's impactful. And if I was a, a newspaper reporter or whatever, I'd have to leave everything in, but I'm not. Here's another example. Not a bad picture of this Ferris wheel, but there were certain things in it that kind of bugged me a little bit. It were these lines that are part of the structure, but if I just take a few minutes and come in here and I just start working and I cloned out those little bars and even the little notches in the Ferris wheel, if you can see before and after, it's very subtle, but it ends up making a big difference. And, and that's part of what I want to share with you is the philosophy of cleaning up your images to make them as, as crisp and clean as possible. You also notice that if you look up in the corner, that cloud is kind of bright. Your eye is always going to be drawn to the brightest things in the image. Well, I don't want the eye to go up to the top left-hand corner, so I, I tone that down so that your eye stays with the Ferris wheel. Here's another example. Kind of a neat situation, but a lot going on. What I really wanted to do was to calm this photo down. So using healing brush, using content aware fill, I simply wiped out some of the people in there so that your eye has a resting place amongst all the busyness. I hope that makes sense. You're, you're able to, with Photoshop and Lightroom, to clean some things up to give your eye a place to rest as it's going through all this. So if I do real quick a, a before and after, this looks kind of like a, a snapshot. This one looks a little more deliberate and a little more thought through. I took out some distracting things like the light stand over here and the people walking and just cleaned up the streets so that it's, it's peaceful in here amidst all the action going on there. And then finally, the last thing is, Here's a shot that I really like with two Ferris wheels. This was shot at about four second exposure. And I really like it as it is, but there are a couple things that bothered me. One were these lines right here. I wanted to get rid of those, but what really, always check your corners. I've got this little spot right here that I'm gonna get rid of, but what I really wanted was for these lights to be carried over here. Now most people would go, oh, it's a pretty good thing, clean it up. But I just came over imported into Photoshop and I just copied some lights from the other place and brought that in. And so look at the difference. I've only made some quick little tweaks, but look at the difference between, now granted, yes, I add a little more sharpness to it. So you see before and after, but just those lights in that corner there make a big difference in this photograph where it kind of is playing to something that's got a little more pop to it. Those are very simple things that you can do, but they're gonna take your photograph from being a good photograph to hopefully an even better photograph. And so it's not really showing you a lot of techniques and stuff right now, but what I wanted to share with you is that you need to have the philosophy of going into your photographs and using Lightroom, using Photoshop to enhance them and to delete anything that's distracting, distracting from it to really give your photographs pop. So, I hope that makes sense. I hope you understand that you have the power in Photoshop to make it that much better by tweaking just a couple little things.
Now, Pete, I have a very important question there. Yep. Did you ride the Super Himalaya? <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, the Super Himalaya, I broke my foot on the Himalaya in seventh grade when my foot went over the front and got crushed in between the two cars. So uh, it's my nemesis. No, I did not ride it. Not even a tilt a whirl? No. Sorry. I love the Scrambler. You know, the, you know it's just. I only go to the fair for the food nowadays, though. They've got really. Donut good. burger, baby. It's some of the best bad food you'll ever have. <laughs> all right, I have fixed my issue. May I show it before we go to another break, real quick? Yes. All right, so it's actually all too simple. You're going to wonder how this happened. So it was just merely, there's that channel. What was the problem was, my original streaks that I had added were part of the uh, channel when I, we made a new one. It didn't uh, need to be. Of course. So I just turned that off, made another duplicate, and then really boost the contrast up and inverted it, as you saw a moment ago. So all I needed to do is back in the image here is go and create a new layer, load, so it's, what is it, blue, copy two. So I'm going to load that selection, and then fill it with white. And then nudge the selection over just a little bit, just one, two, three uh, pixels over, hit delete, and there is my light edge. Now if it seems too intense, again, we'll just drop the opacity down, and you can see the difference getting a little bit of an edge light on those trees. So that is what it's supposed to be. <laughs> well, that, I can sleep now because I was worried I was going to be up all night wondering what went wrong. It was going to ruin my entire week, <laughs> and it is only Tuesday. Okay, <laughs> let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. We've got some things we're going to give away. We're going to wrap things up. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Scott Kelby here. I'm the Comfort Technical Chair for the upcoming Photoshop World Conference and Expo. I want to tell you something new we're doing for 2013 I think is going to have a really big impact. So we have over 100 training classes over the three days. What we've done is we've divided these very carefully into seven training tracks. It's like having seven conferences all in one place at the same time. and You can choose which one you want to go to. For example, let's say that you come to Photoshop World and you really want to learn Lightroom. Well, we have a Lightroom track that runs every day throughout the conference. So you can go there and learn nothing but Lightroom. Or what if you wanted to learn lighting? You can go and get the best instructors teaching you lighting every single day. We have seven different tracks that are going. And by the way, if you're in a track, you don't have to stay in that track. You can go into any track you like and switch anytime, many times as you want. That's what's great about this. It gives you complete control over creating a custom conference experience with seven different tracks to choose from. I hope I'll see you at the upcoming Photoshop World Conference and Expo. All right, we are back. We have a few things to give away, and our prize, Mr. Or, I don't know what you want to call him. The prize man prize is back. If you remember, Dave was always the contest man. He always did that. So we're going to let him redo it once again. So what do we have? So we've got two today? things. One of them is Perfect Resize from On One Software, which is a great piece of software if you need to enlarge things in a way that does a better job than just Photoshop alone. Mm -hmm. And then the wonderful book Google Plus for Photographers by Kobe Brown. Ah. Nice book there. It was just so, here last Yeah, week. we just yeah. had Kobe in last week. So you can get those two prizes. You want to tell them how they do it? How you do it. I hope I'm right, but you go to photo or kelbytv.com slash Photoshop user. Go to this episode, uh, whatever number episode this is. This is 335, I believe it is, because the last one is showing 334. Just go to the page and enter a comment. You know, tell us what you'd like to see on the show. Tell us what you would like to not see, or who you'd like to see, and why, or just post a question. Anything like that. We're going to pick the winner at random. So just go ahead and drop your name in the hat, and good luck to you all. So we absolutely want to thank Mr. Dave Cross for taking time out of his busy hmm. home building schedule. <laughs> My pleasure. It's to good to be away from today. that stress of why is that there? Why is that wrong? I know he's <laughs> telling me that he's, he's got a custom home, and now he's customizing it. And all these different things are happening. It's too funny. So. Yeah. The it's fun funny. of building a home. You're working with a lot of studs, aren't you? <laughs> Just ignore that. Okay. <laughs> and, and on that note, Pete, thank you. <laughs> yep. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> we can always count on you, Pete. Thank you very much. <laughs> of course, and uh, thanks to our sponsors and, of course, the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. You can find us more at PhotoshopUser.com. Thank you once again. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.